As you start your journey through Pal World's massive explorable world, you might find yourself struggling with a couple things. Running out of inventory space, collecting resources, and where's the best place to put a base anyway? I'm going to share my best tips for getting started in Pal World that will help make your life much easier. Let's get started with the inventory. As the game starts, you're only able to carry a max weight of 300, and as you level up and earn skill points, it might seem like the only and maybe the best option is to tuck all your points into carry or weight, but don't do this. Save those skill points to use for later as you start to figure out your play style and what's more important to you. In the meantime, let me tell you an alternative way to help with carrying limits at the beginning of the game. Start by catching 5 Cativas. Each Kativa comes with the ability Cat Helper, which increases your weight by 50. By having 5, you'll be able to carry an additional 250 weight at the beginning of the game. This is really helpful, not only while you're trying to decide where to put your first base, but also as you start to collect and store resources for crafting and buildings. As a quick small side note, Pal World actually gives you a bonus for each Pal you catch starting from 1 all the way up to 10. It's a great way to get a boost to the experience and help raise your own level and get a little horde of pals that will come with different abilities. Tip number two is about collecting your resources. Gathering wood, stone, and etc. are all really important for your progression in Pal World. But wait! Don't just rush out of your base and start collecting right now. Let's make a plan of attack regarding what you're going to gather and see if you have any pals that can make that a lot easier. Before you head out, review your pals. Even if you have the same pal, no two pals are the same. They come with a variety of passive skills that will help you decide if they're better suited for working in the base, being in your team, or for something different. If you're heading out to gather wood, bring along any pals that have lodging foremen. Each pal with this ability will give you an increase of 25% to your efficiency when trying to gather wood. This means you'll be able to gather wood faster than you would without it. So if you bring two pals with you, you'll be gathering wood at a 50% increased rate. But if you bring five, then you'll be doing it at a 125% increased rate. My third tip is around where is the best place for a base? You can set up a base almost anywhere in Pal World. And while that's really cool, it leaves a lot of room for mistakes. For example, it might seem really cool to put your base right next to the ocean, but you can't build over the ocean. So you'll end up losing a lot of parameter that you could use for buildings, structures, and just other stuff you're going to need. So be careful that you don't put your base right next to the ocean. And while you can build on a hillside, things start to look a little slanted when <laughs> you try to build here. And it can make building a structure maybe a little more work than you want. So for that, I recommend you don't build on a slope. Make sure you don't build near too many rocks either. If you put your base right on a sloped area with a whole bunch of rocks, you're not going to have a lot of place to build, well, much of anything. And as easy as it is to just destroy your pal box and move somewhere else, it's going to be difficult to pack up all those crates of resources, <laughs> especially in the early game. For that reason, let's make sure we pick a good spot first. For your first base, I recommend this area as a great location to start. Your base will have natural trees and stone that regenerate in here, as well as the stone that gives you the pal shards you need to make your pal spheres. When you're not having things for your pals to do, they'll just run around and break these rocks all on their own as long as they're within the limitations of your base. You get a lot of space here, and while there's a little bit of rocks here and a little bit of water over here, in general, I think this is a great spot for a first base. You'll have plenty of room to build a shelter, Plenty of room to add any of your crafting tables or workbenches that you're going to need, plus a lot of this other stuff you see here. And hey, if you found any of these tips helpful, hit that like button. And if you want to see more tips, analytical comparisons, or watch me struggle to be good at games, consider subscribing. As a thank you, here's some bonus tips. Now that we've caught some pals and we picked a good place for our first base, now it's time to start putting those pals into our base. Before we do that though, we need to actively take stock of what skills we're going to need from our pals that work inside of our base. If we don't have a plantation, a crusher, a campfire, or a furnace, we're probably not going to need any pals that know how to plant seeds, farm, use fire, or need to water anything. What we might find helpful are pals that know how to craft with handiwork and can take over some of the crafting for us while they're in the home base. It's also good to try to get some pals that can do logging or can do mining. 
because when they don't have anything to do, they'll run over to those resources that respawn on their own and harvest them for us. Look through your pal box, you'll be able to see really quickly what pals have what skills. So make sure you pick the right ones for the job. Another tip is when you're picking your pals, make sure you review their passive skills. No two pals are created equal, and some of them have great skills for battle, some of them have great skills for working in a base, and some of them don't have great skills for working in a base. So, because you want to avoid any pals who have bottomless stomach, clumsy, destructive, glutton, hooligan, muscle head, slacker and unstable these each have a different impact regarding work speed the the rate at which their sanity decrease decreases and at how quickly they get hungry meanwhile on the flip side passive skills you're gonna want to keep your eyes open for are artisan conceited dainty eater diet lover legend lucky nimble serious swift workaholic and lastly and oddly named um, work slave and that does it for the end of this tips video if there's anything else you'd like some tips on or any questions you have drop them below in the comments i'd love to make videos answering your questions thanks for sticking out to the end and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye